What is going on everybody? Today's video is picking up right where the last one left off. We're going to get this thing mounted, but very first thing I want to do is weigh it and kind of see what my weight difference is going to be. Alright, so I have one of our car scales underneath of it, obviously zeroed out and everything, and it's not touching the ground, as you can see, so it's kind of just resting on this, and we are at 370 pounds. So I'm going to note that the solid axle, um, we're going to just weigh all the pieces and then just do a little math, add them together. Alright guys, so here's where we're at. After weighing the solid axle, the uh, pan hard bar, the torque arm is this big thing, all that stuff. Here's where we're at. The new IRS 370, solid 302. So I'm putting on about 70 pounds. If you've been watching these uh, IRS swap series, in the very first one I kind of explained why it's not really the worst thing. At Lime Rock Park last race, uh, I rolled across scales at 2,970 with me in the car. Um, and the way, if you're familiar with ST2, you get a points break at 3,000 pounds. You get an extra .1 power. Um, so, you know, 30 of that will get me up to that 3,000 plus a little bit of, uh, you know, extra in case the, the scales or the dyno read a little bit different. So I'm really only carrying an extra, I don't know, 20, 30 pounds. All that weight is centered around the rear axle really low in the car so you know I don't think it's a huge deal you know I'm a little bit of a stickler on weight but you know kind of is what it is um, I think the performance gain will far exceed the slight weight gain so with all the weights out of the way we're ready to slide this under the car and get it in its final home I might need to I, I'm definitely gonna have to cut these off these little tubes right here are add-ons to the stock spring perches. They're, they're a Maximum Motorsports piece, which was kind of cool, because in conjunction with the control arms, wherever they are, um, it allowed you to run a coilover spring in the conventional on the control arm location, uh, which kind of made spring changes cheap and much more plentiful. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna cut them off for sure, because I know uh, the one mount on the subframe is gonna be really close. Uh, you know, not touching the OEM frame, that's where we're kind of button up into the rules just a little bit. Um, you know, you can't really modify the frame or the OE or the subframe. Uh, so I kind of got to, you know, be a little careful there. But yeah, we're going to hack them off. Um, yeah, and get this thing into position. It might be hard to get under here once the subframe's up and in, so we're going to kind of go over it now. So here's why I just cut that thing off. This is the OEM spring perch right here. Um, the, the IRS, that's, that's a direct replacement for this chassis, ties into the control arm mounting points here. So as you can see, there's you know thicker metal here. Uh, the frame rail is a little bit thicker. Uh, you can see it's only like a couple spot welds kind of holding all this crap together. Um, the this front mounting point here if you remember is gonna land somewhere right around here now the rules provide a three-quarter inch hole drilled into any OEM frame rail or floor or anything so if we end up here what I might do is make some sort of bracket that goes in sideways because if you can see here is the is the you know the factory upper control arm mounting point from the solid axle uh, this bracket right here is the weld on bracket from the Maximum Motorsports sway bar so I can actually if I need to cut this little chunk of metal off I can um, But yeah, so you can see with the mount being here we can tie into a few different places So yeah, so we have options to get this thing mounted and again the the what's it the 90 98 to 04 Cobras, I think, had the IRS. Um, and that's kind of one of the reasons why I'm going with this one out of the, the newer Mustang. They're much more plentiful. 
if you look at the brackets that hold that IRS subframe into the car, <laughs> they're, they're really nothing substantial. So anyways, I just went over kind of some mounting location because once that's all up and in there, it's kind of, might not be able to see it all. So yeah, I think I'm going to try and scoot this under and get it up to uh, where it needs to go. kind of up and in we're getting close um, I put some pictures on a few Facebook groups for Mustangs asking for a few measurements so I know how that subframe is supposed to sit on a regular s550 Mustang um, and these are some of the measurements I got up here of stock ride height lowering it those are kind of the measurements I want to get and then that 11 and a half is kind of like when I do my flat floor. Anytime you do suspension or kind of almost anything, you should put some marks a few places around your car. So when you jack your car up, the chassis sits like it will normally, you know. So that 11 and a half, you know, so this 28 when the car was on the ground is now 39 and a half. Yes, yeah, so that would be 11 and a half. So anyway, so, so those few mounting location pictures that I put on those Facebook groups um, plus the car coming up 11 and a half that's where I get that 21 for that front flange and 20 and a quarter for this rear inner bolt this one right there so uh, yeah what I'm gonna do now is kind of do those few last tweaks to kind of get it where it needs to be I got a few extra like ratchet straps, bring in another jacks, jack stands, whatever I need to do to kind of hold this exactly where it needs to go and then work on the brackets. So we're all set up. Uh, finally got this thing where it needs to be. Uh, you can see I kind of got like ratchet straps on it to kind of pull it, jack stands, all that stuff to kind of hold it where it, exactly where I need it. So the rear is easy. Believe it or not, we, about, we need about an inch and a quarter spacer right here. But that lands right on the frame rail, so we're just going to drill a hole straight through to the top, put like a um, crush tube in there, plates on the top and bottom, and you know, rear's done. So that's easy. The front, on the other hand, I've been thinking about it for a little bit. So I'm probably going to build like a uh, tube coming off, stitch weld this plate on all the way. This is still the maximum part, I just lopped off that tube earlier but this is the original spring pocket. So it's kind of reinforced all up in here. So what we're gonna do is put a nut on the back side of this. There's a hole, I don't know if we can get in there. There it is, right there. Um, kind of build like a, uh, I don't really know what you wanna call it, like a standoff tube off of here, off of here, and then weld a tube to connect them. Um, it's almost straight up and down, so that's fine. And then we're gonna do some sort of like U bracket, I think weld a tube to that that goes to the original control arm mounting holes right there so the front needs a little bit more work um, but since we're dealing with some like reinforced areas already I think we should be okay well good morning everybody it is the next day last night I kind of just got rolling along and got in one of those like kind of just do stuff modes uh, so I'm gonna catch you up real quick here is the start of our brackets. We got a left and a right. And this front bracket here, I think I got the right side, yeah. Kind of fits up under there like that. I'll get a better shot of it later, but you know. So what we're gonna do is a hole through here, through the frame rail behind it. That'll kind of hold this. Probably run something like I mentioned earlier to the front uh, control arm mounting point and then build our little top bit up to the original spring perch. Um, oh, while we're back here, the rear, I guess this side's a little hard to see, so I'm gonna turn my spacers uh, that are gonna take the place of this uh, little aluminum block. Um, once I get those turned, you can see I'm already drilling uh, the hole. What I did was with the 5 8 bit from underneath, make like a little mark uh, on the bottom side of the frame rail. Let's hop over here, it might make a little more sense. So I went through the whole thing. Oops. 
so I went through the whole thing because I know it's a, you know, this drill bit made the holes in the solid bushings straight up. So that way the little mark that was put on the bottom of the frame rail was dead in line with these. Just started working my way, drilling it up. Um, the only issue I have right now is when this goes through the angle it needs to be on the drill ends up bumping into my wing mount so i can't go all the way through um so my stubby or my 90 degree drill only goes up to uh three ace chuck so i really don't want to have to like drop the whole subframe to finish that last hole so i might just go through the bushings with the um bigger bit I don't want to like uh, oversize those aluminum bushings though so easy enough there make those and then finish up the brackets on the front so that's kind of where we're at right now um, yeah so I guess I'll kind of get some stuff done and then kind of catch you up in a second all right guys check it out no jacks no jack stands those ones are obviously holding the car itself so we're not finished. I got I can't stress that enough. <laughs> but you know, this bracket's kind of taking shape. Uh, we're through there. Um, this is enough to hold it. But yeah, I still need to finish the going up, and I also want to reinforce it to the stock uh, control arm torque box here. The rears. I think I showed them earlier. Uh, still have to do some stuff up top. So what we're gonna do? where this goes through the top here is just the floor so that's just sheet metal so you kind of want to make like a standoff that goes down and really squeezes the thick part of the frame rail to this aluminum bushing i'll i'll kind of go over that a little bit later but yeah i'm excited this thing's in under its own weight um you can see i have the shock on the ground i i still don't know what i'm going to do here Let's see, I was tinkering around with it a little bit. But you can see the original mount is right about there. And we're a tiny bit tall, but I mean, that's fine because there's plenty of length uh, uh, of travel. Plus, you also got to realize the rubber bushings on this thing, if I put a tiny bit of weight on it, it can still go down. So it's not really under full droop, if that makes sense. So the mounts are out and back a little bit which is fine if the shocks on an angle uh, but you lose a little bit of I don't want to say efficiency but you lose a little bit of uh, effectiveness I guess um, anytime the shock or spring or coil over is at an angle there's a whole formula for all that I'll get into that probably that'll be a whole nother video um, but I mean it's close enough where I should be able to make some sort of bracket on the control arm and you know get this to work so I will need to look into like wheel, uh, wheel rates and everything because I know I looked up the formulas to calculate it between a solid axle and now a independent rear suspension such as this. The, the, the wheel rates are going to be different with the leverage ratio across the whole solid axle or the pivots of a control arm are totally different. So I got to look into that a little bit. Um, you know, that's kind of stirring around in the back of my head. So yeah, if you're watching this and kind of have 10 million questions, so do I, <laughs> I'll figure them out. Uh, don't have all the answers right yet, but yeah, we'll keep plugging away and kind of figure them out as we go. I think that's about it right now. Um, it's getting late on a Sunday, so I'm going to kind of wrap it up, uh, you know, real life wise, video wise. Uh, I guess I'll pick up when I kind of finish doing some of the brackets and kind of finalize the mounting of this thing right now a few of the things I wanted to look into were figuring out the shock mount now that it's in I can take a measurement for my drive shaft as well as figure out what I want to do with a fuel cell so yeah stay tuned next clip will kind of catch you up with whatever I can get done I guess in the next few days all right so late last night I was able to get all of the brackets finished painted in blue uh, just because our logo is blue and I think blue looks a little cooler than like a black bracket under there hidden so what we're gonna do uh, quick little tip 
if you use some wire, you can paint them all in one shot rather than like paint them, flip them, let them dry. Or, I'm sorry, paint them, let them dry, flip them. So, you know, just hanging them makes them a little bit easier to, to paint. Uh, but yeah, we're going to get all these taken down back into the garage. Go over them real quick before we put them in and then pretty much wrap this thing up. This will be the mounting part of this S550 subframe swap. Alright, so here's the two main brackets needed. This one, like I mentioned several times before, will use that front control arm mounting hole. And then that hole that I made right there. Um, and then the subframe will sit on top of it. Coming down from the top will be, we're utilizing this hole. And then this just kind of comes down from the top, tying all that in. And then the rear is easy because we are going just into the subframe. So this hole right here. And you know, all we really need is a spacer, one giant bolt through the subframe, through all of that. All right, so we're finally at the point where I need to make uh, standoffs, I'll call them, or you know, spacers that go around the bolt that comes through because what we're gonna do is we're gonna hop up onto the whiteboard. I already measured it out uh, to figure out how tall the shim needs to be. So anytime you're bolting something to something that's hollow, what we're gonna do is kind of draw out like a cross section of where I'm gonna be bolting that. So let's say the frame rail kind of comes like this. Oops. Trying to draw it through the can. Uh, let's, uh, let's thicken it up because it's that's kind of like the thick metal there, right? And then you have just one thin layer of sheet metal, which is the floor of the or you know the trunk floor. Down here is where the you know the big subframe is, and that big bolt comes through all of this, right? Oops. So if we were to just put a nut on the top here and crank it down, it would cave in this little bit of sheet metal and you wouldn't get too much holding power. So what we need to do is just cut a little tube or like a, a shim. Just think of it as like a really tall stack of spacers that, so when you tighten it down, getting a little messy with my drawing now, so when you tighten it down, it doesn't crumple in this little bit of sheet metal and the bolt actually pulls this all together and you get all of your clamping load right here. I hope that kind of, you know, makes sense as to what's going on there. Anytime you need to bolt uh, like a frame rail, it's pretty much kind of when it'll primarily happen. Um, a good example of that is the maximum uh, panhard bar. Right here is like a little, um, so what you do is you drill through so you can clamp this down tightly But you know that piece right there allows you to bolt it tight you get good clamping force without collapsing the frame rail All right, and just so you can see it like in real world. Here's my shim or standoff whatever you want to call it and then it goes in you, f you see it bottom out on the bottom of the frame rail the thick part underneath and it's just shy of this sheet metal and then we're going to put a big washer on it and that way we can bolt it down tightly without deforming the floor. Alright guys, here it is all mounted up. You can see the brackets that we had to make. Rear's bolted up. So yeah, I'm excited. This thing is in the car where it's gonna hopefully stay for a long time. Um, so yeah, that's where I'm going to wrap up the mounting bracket part of this S550 subframe swap. Um, if you enjoyed it, please give this video a thumbs up. I got a ton of people asking me questions about how, to, how I was going to do the brackets and everything. This video covers that. I already did all of my shock mounts and everything. So there's the shock mount bracket right there. So hit that subscribe button because the shock mounting video is going to come out really soon. Everything is already shot for that. Um, even though I'm working on the car kind of out of order, I'm going to try and do these videos in order or in, I guess like in chunks that make sense. So as always guys, thanks for hanging out and I'll see you in the next one.